Dr. Fizz, theoretical physics more fun with transform space. Here we have chosen Salvador Dali's The Persistence of Memory from 1931 to represent the transform space. And here we have the Geneva clock. Now the reason why I chose the clock is because we're going to be applying the Fourier transform to a function of time, f of t. So we have here what some call the time domain and when you take the Fourier transform of a function of t it's conventional to use the omega variable for your transform function and that is a frequency so some refer to this as the frequency domain notice that at our Fourier transform we use the minus sign here because we reserve the plus sign for when the f of t is on the left so we're going to take a differential equation, time is central for our application. We're going to be using a differential equation with respect to time. We're going to insert the direct delta function as the impulse delta t, take the Fourier transform, transform that differential equation to an algebraic one where time is distorted and things, but you have that differential equation in algebraic form now when you look at it in this space as it's been transformed. Then you take the inverse transform, you know, solve your algebra, and then take your inverse transform to get back, and guess what you're going to need? You're going to need the complex integration techniques. So because we can get back with the Fourier transform, that's why we're doing this. See, Laplace transform, we had to resort to the table. Well, we're going to do all this ourselves, find our own key to get back, and when we get back, we get the quest goal, the Green's function. So let's look at the Fourier transform of a derivative to make sure that these derivatives will melt away. Well, the Fourier transform of df dt is approached the same way we did for the Laplace transform. We look at the product rule of differentiation, which is essentially going to be using the integration by parts trick. So we have the derivative of the first times the second function plus the first function f of t times the derivative of the second which brings down that minus i omega and you get the same exponential factor. Now here we have in the integrand this piece here we're going to bring this uh, far right piece over to the left hand side and insert the combination the two here the sum into the integrand. So we get the integral of the derivative which will simply lift the derivative and have the two functions multiplied and at infinity or minus infinity this function is zero it's well behaved at infinity so that we have a Fourier transform in the first place. Then the second one here it, that came from this one on the other side has the plus i omega and it's simply the Fourier transform of f of t which is capital F of omega. i omega hits it in front so we have this neat little formula for a transform of the derivative i omega times the Fourier transform of the function. What about this Fourier transform of the second derivative? Well we use the old trick let some g of t be a first derivative so then the derivative of the g is the second derivative. So we have the second derivative of f is going to be the first derivative of the g and then we use the i omega capital G the rule here and then that capital G is nothing more than the Fourier transform of a derivative of something else and then use the formula again here which is going to give you i omega f and then you're going to have i times i is negative 1 and omega times omega is omega squared. So you have these neat results. The Fourier transform of the first derivative, i omega times the Fourier transform of the function, and the Fourier transform of the second derivative equals minus omega squared times the Fourier transform of the function itself.